Here we are, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Night. Oh. Kim Kinsley in the house, everybody. Lovely to so be all these here. people tuning in. Just before we get started on this, on this, on this winding journey tonight, um, I'd like to first of all get you. Any user feeling a little bit stiff or need to stretch? Just stretching out and just just hitting that like button a little bit, and um, it really helps us. Like, share, subscribe. It's really important. So tonight, I would like to introduce a famous Kim, who's a film producer, a breath worker, a heart facilitator, a farmer, a hemp, like an oil producer, you know, a spiritual teacher, to, to say the very least. I met Kim a long time ago uh, in, a, in a sort of uh, in a, in a therapeutic uh, arrangement, and he impacted me deeply. Uh, and this is about nine years ago now, and I, I still remember the moment I met him. Kim is a heir from the Guinness family who was born extremely bathed in wealth and, and fell into extreme, I suppose, a sort of spiritual poverty, one could say, mm. for the last four years. And he's went through this journey of being able to rediscover himself and pick himself up with every last breath to come back alive, fully engaged more and more with life saying yes to life on his terms, you know, on, on life's terms, moving towards life. Kim's most important thing that, 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 that sparks him and brings him alive is a thing called connection. Mm. And he seeks it and weaves it through his life. So today, we got Kim Kinsley in the house. Kim, welcome, brother. Nice. Nigel, what can I say? It was, you know, very interesting just feeling into what you were saying just now. And actually, you were referring to four years. And I thought, no, the where I really fell into spiritual poverty was in my 20s. Wow. Let's be real about it, man. I mean, like I was, you know, so lost in my 20s. It wasn't without fun. And, um, you know, I think I, I, <laughs> the bits that I can remember, um, you, you know, as I went into all sorts of different areas of taking drugs and chasing money and having money and then getting a career as an actor and then finding myself pulling the car over to the side of the road in Soho next to a strip joint. And I was on my way to an audition for another car commercial i think it was and i just started crying and crying and i had this pit gut pain and it was a familiar pain that i'd really had all my life since the earliest memories and i didn't know why i was crying because i had a house a girlfriend a career that was taking off i had everything that we were supposed to have and i was fucking devastated, miserable, and did not know what to do next. So there was a precursor to the bit you've just described. Wow, man. Wow, like, how did you manage to survive those 20s and 30s? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I kind of nearly didn't. Uh, and, uh, and I think the, the, there was a sliver of fun in it in the, the really, frankly, appalling kind of behavior. And, um, you know, with quite a lot of famous people drinking and God knows what else, uh, you know, quite a few books have been written about that period in the Groucho Club. Uh, and, you know, I, and I sort of somehow navigated my way through it, but I rang my sister, actually, and I s said to her kind of through sobs, what can I do? W where do I go? How do I navigate this? And she sent me to a Jungian analyst called David Herbert, 4531237. Never forget his answering machine. And I thought this was absolute nonsense to go to a therapist all the way up in North London. And I arrived at his door and I opened the door. He opened the door. And in that moment, I completely broke down. I looked at this man and he held me in his arms and I cried for three months 
three three hour sessions three days a week and he navigated and showed me from where the pain had arisen you know from the pre-birth to conception to uh, the actual birth itself to my mother to my father to the behavior to the abuse to the being born with an umbilical cord around my neck so he brought in rebirthers and suddenly the whole thing started becoming a fascinating journey into something i had absolutely no clue about nor does most people who are living on this planet and it was revelatory beautiful and terrifying and then gradually the crying sort of subsided the river of tears slowed and he made me paint and i started painting images of ireland which is when where one side of my family's from and then after three months he was like okay you're good to go out into the world again and i felt very healed and did magical things and was having a magical life. And I had no idea that the bit that you described that was coming l much, much later on in my life was going to come, but it did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think a, a worthy life, you know, like a worthy life is a life of continual sort of hero's journeys yeah. where you meet the calamities and you yeah. get the call, you know, yeah. and you, the call to adventure, the call to, mm -hmm. to really look, you know, and, and, you know, like, and see after that time with the analyst, you know, it's really interesting for our viewers, you know, because there's a lot of people watching us, maybe not necessarily now, but later on on, on the repeat, um, may have never been to a therapist before and mm -hmm. have no idea about therapy and probably believe that going to the pub or speaking to the hairdresser or speaking to, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the guy at the, at the, at the gas station um, or just holding it in is the way to go. But I'm just curious about even that first call to, to have that close connection, that, that sort of accompaniment, which I, I really felt strongly as you were met at the doorway with this guy. How did that start to kind of shape that? What was different about Kim as he came out of that three month uh, experience? What was, what was there that, that wasn't really there before? I think oh, was... yeah, uh, what was there? I, th I well, I think the, the 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 stepping stone was was the 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 you know accepting feeling certain mm -hmm. feeling and um, being in touch more with source. And actually, right after that, I had an experience in Ireland where I met a wild dolphin called Fungi, and um, it was just something that I'd painted quite a bit. It, there was a sort of a calling for it, but it wasn't a big thing. And well, that's right. There's the picture. You're right there. Mm -hmm. Me kissing the dolphin, a wild dolphin. So it was a very, very magical experience. And actually what happened in the moment when I got into the water was that this huge Atlantic bottlenose dolphin swam toward me, turned around and looked at me with this huge eye wow. that, that moved like this. And it was in that moment that I had, I mean, some people have said to me since that it was a Samadhi moment. It was a moment without doubt where I knew that every single thing I had been taught and that we are all taught pretty much in the educational system and by our cultures and families was an utter lie. And it was the most liberating moment because I just felt one with everything. I can say that now. I didn't know how to describe it at the time. And when I got out of the water, I was flopping around Dingle, like kind of like staring at the sky and being ecstatic and being completely mad and not caring about anything. And I rang my agent and I said, don't book any more acting jobs. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm not going to do that stupid shit anymore. Sorry, no offense to beautiful actors and actresses watching this, but I just, I, I wanted a more authentic existence. I didn't want to play parts. I wanted mm -hmm. to be in my own part. And, and I think that's when I started going on a quest and it was a quest to seek out elders, knowledge. You know, I'm afraid I became the classic spiritual tourist. I dipped my toe into Buddhism. I, I took knowledge, Prem Rawat. I did everything. And it was, there were really fabulous experiences and moments of course he'd said to me one last thing he said look we've really cleaned out this oyster it's looking very beautiful 
And, you know, you've even glimpsed, you know, there's a pearl there, but this is just the beginning of the work because there's grit in the oyster that you're going to have to deal with. And I kind of took, took it on board. And the reality is, I mean, I don't want to dwell too much on that whole period. It was very beautiful, but it's like, I look back on it and, you know, I was very present in some moments. I knew then that there was that experience, but I would come in and out of it. And I sort of, I, I did the AA thing for a year in Los Angeles because I definitely had a problem with alcohol. And um, I kind of like dabbled back in and out of it. And I think that deep down I knew that I hadn't dealt with the really, really raw, deep wound and the deep wounds. And I kind of was desperately trying to go here and there to avoid it. And, you know, it, it's it, the drinking came and went. Sometimes it was hidden. It was almost like I had two lives. I had my kind of spiritual life. And then I had this other part that still wanted to avoid difficult feelings, unpleasant feelings, still this residual pain, this... And those addictions have been ongoing, you know, and battling within me um, and gradually lessening as time has gone by and then reaching different plateaus and crises. And I'd say that things are pretty harmonious and balanced now, but it's, you know, they've been haunting me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had to be very diligent with them all the way through. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. And the really, as I'm, you know, I like what, a, what you know, what, what a shift after that that initial sort of uh, accompaniment and and sort of uh, you know having someone to walk with you to lean into the grit and to birth a pearl, but to know that there's more grit there that that needs to be looked at and and and, and held and, and explored. Kim, after this, what would have been the you know, uh, one or two timelines or, or like events that happened from then, you know, that stand out in, in your mind. I remember seeing a picture of you and, in, in, you know, you, you made this great uh, wheel movie, you know, you know, and uh, I seen, I, I seen this picture in my mind right now, you with some elders. I'm, I'm curious mm -hmm. about what that was and if that would be one of the things that would stand out as a pivotal mm -hmm. moment after that time for you. I think that, that, that the the analysis which led to the quest which led to the seeking and the searching you know one of the things that kind of kept me avoiding from really really going into my own deep wound was that i kept having amazing experiences with beautiful teachers mm -hmm. so you know so i'm sitting with amachi and getting a hug and i feel all that beautiful unconditional love yum great get my spiritual name great you know and then hang out in byron bay with the with the ferals and go up into the forest and see the rainbow temple and, you know, just, and Maui and all of these extraordinary places around the world, which have these sort of free thinking, free flowing beings and the sannyas people, the, you know, the, the sannyasins and Osho and discovering Kirtan and music. And it's just like all the, the they were just, you know, and sitting with the elders, you know, sitting with elders in South Africa, you know, being given my, spiritual name in zulu with uh, uh, baba visa mazulu mutwa you know and listening to the creation stories i mean i i was i was so incredibly blessed to be receiving all of this wisdom and 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 story mm -hmm. and um but the honest you know way that i look back on it now is that i wasn't fully present in it all I'm aware of that now. I don't think I, I think I was aware that something was off at the time, but I, I, I was keeping it hidden. I was, I was playing the part of this person and I was given incredible experiences. And I mean, I'm using a lot of those experiences and the knowledge that I learned now around the fire and the way that I do ceremony and the way, you know, so it's all be beautiful and fabulous. But in my own connection with myself, there was a darkness that I was hiding, that I was avoiding, that I was trying not to show people. And of course, more often than not, they came up in personal relationships and in intimacy. Um, 
you know, the kind of very deep wound of abandonment. And so, you know, I always find that very difficult because somehow or other in that intimacy, I would be beautiful love, but at the same time, I would get really, really triggered very easily by really nothing. And yeah. it was just that awful feeling of a, you know, little child being abandoned and no one wants to be a little with a little abandoned child. It's, this has been very difficult for me in my life and it, it takes a, a, some, some work and, it's for me it's still ongoing. I can love a whole room deeply, mm -hmm. be yeah. really present with someone else's pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel you know blessed because I'm you know I, I am the healing in myself continues, but it's been it hasn't been easy to navigate these spaces with my own with my own longing and my own you know, darkness, my own triggers. Yeah, it's really, you share this. Um, you know, I think, you know, for the viewers out there who struggle in relationships and, you know, who sometimes feel small and young, sometimes get triggered by the smallest of things, but have the biggest of pain. Oh, uh, and, and, and it's like excruciating. It's um, excruciating. It's, and it's totally it's, out of proportion. Um, exactly. It's extraordinary. It's, it's, like, I really, really feel for people, you know, in this space. And it's so good for people to, if we could just honor that, that we do have these wounds and that we do have these triggers. And often it seems so out of proportion rather than saying something like, oh, he's jealous or she's jealous or why is he behaving like that or she behaving like that to say, oh, hang on, let's just stop for a moment. Let's sit, let's breathe together. Let's work through this together and really explore it. And, and again, this is all about education and knowledge. That we could, we, that, you know, we don't because we tend to sort of reject one another when that, when that triggers up, um, it's very, it's very, very difficult to heal these parts of ourselves, but it's what we must do. And it, and it, and really, it's the analogy of the world. It was too difficult to change. We have to do this internal healing so that we can have the reflection of that in our world. A massive systemic change has to take place on this planet for us to come back into balance. And it is a, a very, very huge, humongous task that is before us as a species. Yeah. And it starts with us. It starts with, you know, it starts with your own heart, mm. whether you're dealing with feeling abandoned or rejected or betrayed, you know, or a little bit of all of that at some stage in your life, having trust issues. These are the things that take time and effort and are, can be an excruciatingly uncomfortable journey, but probably the most worthwhile one you could ever take to be able to grow. And yeah. because often, you know, I come from a culture where normally you run from the womb to the grave, you know, and without much luck at the self, you know, it's like, you know, so it's really nice to slow down for any of the viewers watching us to notice these, you know, these triggers, these challenges, these relational habitual struggles to just keep echoing, you know, different faces, different places, but the same pain mm -hmm. and how important it is to sit with that or sit with someone mm -hmm. and say, yeah, tell me some more about that pain. It's okay to be, it's okay for it to be here. So yeah, wonderful, Kim. And, and it's, and it's a journey, you know, like I can identify with the abandonment wound. Mm -hmm. I can identify with being, being young and small and still to this day can be triggered into these places. Mm -hmm. And I think over time, it's, 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 it's not that it, I have more presence and I have more awareness that that's what's happening that helps me be with it in a different way over time. And it's taken wise men or another enlivened being, a vital being to sit with me, another therapist or a group, lots of groups that have helped me been able to show these parts. And I think it's essential. And, you know, as you, as you move through your life now, Kim, and as it's gaining, you know, like, let's go back to that, period of time where I, I outlined in the introduction, you know, this time where things took another turn into a new adventure, a new challenge. Um, tell us more about, about that period of, of your life. And Well, it, it's, uh, I guess, just to clarify a little bit, the family connection 
the Guinness Air piece, well, that's true. I mean, I remember being brought up in these pub kind of horrific schools that we were supposed to be very grateful for torturing us from the age of six. My father used to say to me, it would make a man of me. Um, but this was also the same man that at 21 took me into his office and said he'd heard a terrible rumor that I'd been injecting pot. And uh, he was worried about that too. Thought that the best solution was to go down the pub, have a couple of jars together, which means drinks. Um, he was literally pretty much drunk every day of his life. And when the doctor told him that his liver was in trouble, he came back and he announced this as he went up to order a couple of Guinnesses at the local bar. And I said to him, didn't the doctor just tell you that for six months you should be kind of reconstituting or rebuilding your liver? He said, yeah, that's right. He said, and I said, well, how does the Guinness fit into that picture? And he just <laughs> looked at me and said, well, it's not a gin and tonic, is it? You know, it's, you know, he, as far as he was concerned, a Guinness wasn't a drink. And, um, and then his brother, my dear uncle Gareth Brown, is famous in Ireland for, you know, being Gareth Brown, I suppose. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> O'Reilly. Drink in hand. Look at that. Perfect. Well done. Well, I mean, he actually died sitting at a restaurant with a drink in his hand. And the waiter came up to his friend who he was having lunch with and said, excuse me, sir, your friend looks a bit peaky. He said, oh, he's fine. He's just having a little snooze after lunch. And, you know, it, you know I, am, I am joking. I am laughing. But the, the, the side of that story is that, you know, I came from that background. You know, the other thing my father used to mention to me, because he was always obsessed by, you know, the great heroics of the war. And I'm not putting that down. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be interesting if we looked at the system that created the war? rather than concentrating on the heroics within it, because that's undeniable. Mm -hmm. But why did it occur in the first place? And why did the Great War occur and all the wars before that? Well, it was fought by mainly elite people um, and lots of good people who believe in country and culture died um, for those people. So it's like coming from all of that background and having all of this expectation of, well, father's gone now and now the uncle's gone um you know maybe i'll be inheriting the you know the or at least some of the estate at lugalore and you know maybe in the back of my mind i thought that that was yeah there you go my beautiful sort of spiritual home i would call it the most incredible beautiful place you know and uh, i had images of us doing great spiritual work there and workshops and healing the whole world by bringing them into the portal of this extraordinary um, place. Um, but in that moment, there was a, um, in that living room that I, you know, I wonder if I'll ever sit in it again. I doubt it. But anyway, I was disowned. I was disinherited completely. I, I, I inherited nothing of the whether you believe it's 60 million or 80 million, it doesn't really matter. But I think in my in the back of my mind, I was always cruising a bit, knowing that at some point maybe there'll be a nice little package and that I would just cruise into becoming the next generation to take care of that place. And it didn't happen. And at the same time, um, you know, I was living beyond my means. I was um, on paper involved with a with a technology that seemed to be about to go through the roof it had everything going for it and i had everything i had in it and it was a journey just was it was just a question of time and from one day it being worth i don't know 10 or 15 million on paper the next day it was worth nothing and it was like whoa and then my inheritances dried up and but for people watching this saying god you know you're how can you be complaining um well i'm not complaining I'm just merely stating fact. And it's, you know, just as it's difficult for people to imagine being in a war if you haven't been, it's very difficult to imagine being rich if you haven't been, and very difficult to imagine being poor if you haven't been. It's, you know, we need to have the experiences. Well, I, I then finally really had that experience because I had no money, literally nothing. And um, I, I just didn't have a roadmap for nothing. Uh, it was deeply humbling. 
and shocking actually for me to i think what really got got to me was the fact that i'd been brought up in these kind of rarefied circles with people and they'd always kind of been quite relaxed about their position and you know with the way that the whole society for the most part is hierarchical and somehow or other they were doing good things but yeah i you know i don't think any of them understand that it's very very difficult to feed your family and to take care of your you know to take care of your children um when you're being paid the kind of wages that generally speaking people are being paid across the world it's a deeply flawed and unfair system and when i got a job as a gardener which i love i love gardening i put gardens in wherever i went just because i love it but when i was doing it as a job for 10 pounds an hour just like how does anybody survive it was really really such a huge learning thing for me and never taking that for granted again and but also you know it's inflamed my passion for creating a completely different system around the world where everything's more based in community we take care of one another where money although maybe an element isn't the be all of 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 our lives it should we should, none of us should be dependent on on that or whether whether we're successful or not should be not based on that at all it's completely mm -hmm. flawed and so you know the i the last four years have been letting go of a lot of things and also at one point at the beginning of that journey um it did lead me to consider taking my own life and that's a you know i i, I have deep compassion for those in deep depression and those who are co you know considering suicide yeah because it's it's a very real thing this and um it's not something that you pick up the phone and discuss with people um i got in touch with a an organization well you can do it over the internet just bought all the pills you know and just it's very easy and i just slept with them by my bed and just thought well okay is it today or this is just going to be so much easier than doesn't you know there's anyway I was very lucky to be here today and okay what do you think was the thing that 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 was it a, what was it that made you not reach for those pills and and end it like what you know like if you, in hindsight now looking back what was there enough of I think there's a couple of there's a couple of things which is, I think, even through my addictions and the drinking and the drugs and uh, sex addiction is, was there and a really appalling abuse, actually, in the early 80s and really painful stuff. I think that there was, I always had this weird sense that there was something greater and bigger and deeper that was taking care of me. There was a little internal voice that was sort of, very drowned out, distant, but it was there. And I think that the magical experience, I thought, well, maybe there, maybe that magic's just here, just there, just. And I had a very kind brother and who had me in his house for a while and not very particularly good at feelings, but lovely, beautiful, kind man. Mm -hmm. And my beautiful sister, um, who also helped me and took me in and tried to help me. And then there was one particular moment when I was really in such deep despair and I called some friends who I'd met in Bali and in their kitchen in Cheltenham, this is Terry and Ian, you probably know them, um, beautiful, beautiful people, very kind people. Anthony Abagnano, our old friend from alchemy was there i remember very well because he was drinking a glass of red wine around the kit they were all very jolly i was not jolly at all that's fucking miserable and he i sort of just opened up a little bit to them about what was going on and he just said right okay you're doing the training breath work and i went what breath work what what no yes okay what anyway i started that's how I got into breath work. And I did the first se session with him saying, you know, it's sort of a precursory thing to their main course and the hero's journey that he does online. And I just took 
lying down t two conscious breaths and the tears started flowing again like they had mm -hmm. all those years before with the therapist and um yeah that's from this recent breath camp we just did it's phenomenal work and for me it was a very you know it was it was a six month initial journey of just breathing practically every day and just crying and crying and crying and getting in touch with the feelings and then i did the full training that led to the full training which also was difficult i had a six month thing where i'd had all these amazing releases and then it was just like flat for six months but it was flat in a safe place mm -hmm. you know i was so relieved that it was flat that it was no longer in the pits of darkness yeah i mean and then that led to the maybe mentoring and I mean, we can talk a bit more about that later if you like, but it's 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 mm -hmm. led to me combining all the ceremonial stuff and movement and chanting this deep earth medicine and fire with the breath work. And somebody asked me the other day, well, why? What is it? And I said, well, what, what I love about it is the universality of the language of the breath. There is no dogma in it. It is absolutely what every single human being, bar none, shares on this planet, despite your story, despite your circumstances, whether you be rich, poor, red, green, white, black, however much of the, the lineage of the pain is, we can breathe together right here, right now. And it brings people together in the heart. And it's like when you have that experience with another human being, you realize that they are simply another yourself. And there is no need for all of this differentiation and separation. And, you know, it makes the absurdity of countries and frankly, culture even. We can admire it and we can admire the quality of each other's countries. But it is so subsidiary. It's so nothing compared to what lies underneath it, which is this divine spark, which we can access through the breath and the breath leads us through all the resistances and the stories, and we find our common humanity. That's it. It's, it's, and everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. It's so simple. Yeah, well, yeah, I think, Kim, I think if there ever was a call for an experiential in this moment right now, for yeah. the people watching or for the people who's going to be watching, hmm. is to lead us into a few minutes what that feels like what that looks like you know you with the breath and the heart like okay, give us well, a give us a, a moment to take the people yeah. a little bit deeper now well look it's let's just close our eyes to start with actually no to begin with i think we take um you want to kind of stretch to begin with and you want to ah, ah okay take a few deep breaths now Oh, and kind of sigh on the out. You're really letting go. And try and do it through a quite open mouth. It's sort of like you, you want to kind of release the, that's it, release the tension in the jaw. So there's energy in. And then on the out, instead of blowing out, you just let go. That's it. So it's like energy in and filling up. And just letting go, eyes closed. That's right. And for the last couple, really, maybe even with both hands on the heart, really. Just breathing into your heart, really feeling what it feels like. Ah, oh, sighing and letting go. And already there should be a little bit of lightheadedness, maybe a little bit of tingling, and just keep breathing into the heart. The heart's expanding. And then maybe just one last really deep breath. Ah. Oh. And then just opening the eyes and just noticing that even though we've probably only been doing that for a 
couple of minutes, I, I can feel it in myself. It's, something's changed. You know, actually, we should have done this at the beginning, but we all, like, got straight into the natter. It's like, what if we, when we met, we just, instead of, like, this mad hand thing, what if we just looked in each other's eyes and just felt the person and then just did a few breaths together and just sort of connected in the heart and then proceed to, hello, I'm Kim, what's your name? You know, if we sort of like, it's kind of like we've done everything on this planet is the wrong way around. You know, it's like we've been sort of, the, everything's upside down. It's like we come into the room, we come into a meeting with someone and we just become present like we just did. It's like everything changes. I can, can you feel it? Well, I can, I can feel me more so I can feel you more. Yeah. We're suddenly, suddenly we're, we're just, now we're connected. So please forgive me for not bringing that at the beginning. It's too eager to get onto the story. So I wasn't fully present. Now I am. Mm. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Well, you know, it's, we, we might have to do it at the end again, just to <laughs> send people off with a little bit of a wiggle. You know, yeah, and, uh, and I might just I might find a nice little bit of music maybe to we'll see if we can do something and just leave just leave with that technique and it's something that you can do even when you wake up in the morning is consciously breathe. Um I mean some people like to get out of bed and meditate or some people meditate in bed, some people jump out of bed and do yoga and others are already on their social media, you know, brushing their teeth or already squawking. And rushing and, you know, what hope is there? Of course you're going to be stressed out and fucked up. I mean, how can you possibly avoid it? It's, we're not designed like that. You know, and, you know, what? And once we're fully chipped and, you know, off to the races, you know, with some metal in our brain, then, then, the, then it's game over, you know. So my, my suggestion at the very least is do a bit of breathing in the morning, note to self, um, yeah. get, get kind of, uh, articulate with being present in the core in the heart and proceed slowly into the day present mm -hmm. with ourselves and therefore with one another and you know we can create a very loving compassionate beautiful world and, and it sounds ridiculously simple but that's actually all we've got to do because from that place you don't make so many wrong decisions and you can feel quite calmly and clearly what needs to be done, which is that we've got to do things in a more natural way. We have to connect to the source of all life. We have to be gentle with our earth. We have to respect our mother because it's what gives us life. And we, at the moment, are going in the direction of dominating nature, where we have for a long time. But I believe that cycle's done. I hope it's done as well. And I just want to come back to what you're doing here, Kim, and, and what you the message you're giving to the people here. I just want to kind of you know paraphrase it in a different way. But, mm. And just like to really bring in this sort of when you're connected with your breath or connected with your heart, then you're connected, you know. And then when you move through the world to meet someone, meet a loved one, meet your daughter, mm. meet a work colleague. Meet a random stranger in a busy, you know, you know, subway, mm. you know, or or in, in a cafe. There's mm. there's there's more potential or more possibility. There's something new happening in that moment because there's more of you here. That is, we are, I believe, yeah, really hardwired to to connect, to to feel, to be. Uh, I like we grow. I used to think we grew and developed as humans in isolation and meditation and mm. in caves. And mm. I think that might've been true a few centuries ago, mm. but where I grow is with people. Mm. I get to see my shortcomings. I get to see, you know, where I fall, you know, where, 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 where I, where I illuminate, where I can really penetrate, where I can listen, where I have, where I'm triggered, where I'm challenged, where I'm overcome. And I think all of this happens or can really happen in a deeper way when we're connected with ourselves. And that was a wonderful exercise, Kim, just to, just bringing you in and, 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 and yeah, just, just that, but 
put a different taste in your cup that put a little different slant to your day and yeah Kim and I'm also really you know I'm just kind of seeing this in my mind is sort of in the kitchen with some dear friends and a, a transitory shift into a into another gathering of vibration which you were involved with anyway with indigenous people and you know ceremonies and sounds and you're then in this new vibration of of, to, of togetherness and, and and breath and I think the, the viewer really needs to know a little bit more about what is this thing that you're doing now that's not just breath what is okay what is Kim how, how is Kim flowering at the moment and what does it look like well I've got goosebumps right now and I feel quite emotional because I'm not frightened of emotions anymore, you know, and feelings. How can we not be feeling in these times? So that's, so that just tuning in with you just like that has actually got me more in tune and in flow with how I'm actually feeling. So now this is something that we really can talk about when you talk in relation to this because it's deeply embedded in me as it is with everyone. So in a previous time, I used to think what was important was the plaque on the wall, the teachings given, the ceremonies shown, and all of these sorts of things. But really all of that stuff is just ego in my view. What I believe is happening as we sink into the heart using the breath, because it's just so simple to do so, because it's life itself, divine, sacred life, is it's like suddenly all of those teachings that I was given and things that I was shown make sense, but only if we're present. When we're present, then we're around the fire you understand the fire, you see it, you see what it represents, which is the burning of karma, it can be the burning of negativity, it also can be something that carries the prayers up into the ethers, into other dimensions. The What I do is that I anchor energy in the field that's already here, in everyone actually. So I'm not really doing anything, but I give people permission ah, with sound, vibration, frequency, which is what we are, waves. That's what connects us. That's actually how we communicate with the heart, heart coherence, heart. I think heart math and do that very well. And so instead of it being about the Sanskrit words or the mantra or the, the exact words that that chant represents. It's actually the feeling of it that's important. It's the energy that we put into it. So I always say at my gatherings, if you don't know the words, it doesn't matter. Hum. <laughs> find, find the harmony or sing whatever you like. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I really think Hemingway said, said it ex many years ago, Hemingway said the same bloody thing. He says, it's not about the words in the book. It's about the feeling they give you. Yes. So then suddenly what's happening is it's just all an excuse for us suddenly to be around the fire and we are literally connected vibrationally in the heart. Now, those that are feeling outside that vibration get pulled in very quickly. The heart opens. Suddenly the voice opens. And this, I'm going to call it a prayer, a prayer song, is released into the atmosphere and has a huge profound effect. We feel connected. We sing it up from the earth. So, I mean, I am doing some things that enable that to happen, but it's not about deep protocols. It's, you know, all of that stuff's been mysticized. It's my feeling is that we can do, we are now the fire keepers. Go and make your fire. Take your shoes off. Put your feet on the earth. Kiss the earth. Lie on the earth. Feel the vibration, the pulsing of your mother. So, of course, we're going to sing Pachamama, Pachamama, Pachamama. We love you. We love you. And, you know, people say, oh, you fucking hippies. No, 
Yeah, that's such, such an easy thing to say. And, you know, it doesn't bother me in the slightest because I've always been a bit of a hippie. It's just ridiculous. It This is earth medicine. It is the medicine that's inside of our DNA. So whereas before I got hung up on things like protocols and, and sort of the details of things, now we come together and we do it. And... I mean, I've just been in Italy with 50, 60 people around the fire. It wasn't ideal in the sense that there was dinner going on and people were late and we had a live stream to do because I do it every Tuesday. But we stayed with it. And at nine o'clock when we kind of anchored it and we went and we did this whale chant, I think for some people it was the most profound experience of their life for no other reason than they started to remember who they are. So it was nothing that I did. I mean, people say thank you. Oh, it was great. Blah blah blah. It's you know this is this. It's lovely to hear that, but it's our job as a facilitator is to facilitate someone else having the intense experience for themselves, and then we have another human being who can anchor that around that far, take it out to their community. So we have to teach each other how to sing. It's not about waiting for celebrity. Kitanias to come through town you're it you become the kitania you get your group together around the fire you connect in the heart you do your breath work you do the training you know we need everybody everywhere to wake up now and i get passionate about this because i know it works it gives my life purpose and meaning Whereas before, maybe I was a bit kind of like, oh, I'm the whale guy and I'm hanging out with all the tribal people and I'm cool and all this shit. It doesn't mean anything, any of that. What means something is when we sit together and we yeah, look at eyes and just connect. That's, this, is, this is it. This is it. This is the most profound, beautiful experience. Then you'll understand everything about what it is. <laughs> Kim, can you give an experience of one moment with one person that you saw so the viewer can understand a, a sort of lived experience that 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 an ordinary one that you see often or that stands out in the periphery as you think about it, of a moment in a circle, in a song, in a breath work that guy that, that wants to be spoken to at this moment mm -hmm. in time, just for the viewer to understand something of what happens when people come together. Okay. Maybe I could share t sort of two experiences. I, maybe I will share the freshest one for me right now because it's moving in me so deeply right now. I was, I've been singing a long time, as you know. Um, I, I had an experience with some friends, dear friends, new and old. We went to these pools in, in Italy, a really profound place, and we started just, a song started to emerge between us. And, you know, after the, a week or so, or 10 days of breath work, and it was a weaving of kind of male, female energy, but through voice. And I was held in a... a just a such a profoundly deep loving space that just expanded out and out and out and became entirely infinite till we were no longer there and yet we were everywhere and then we were there but we were still singing and we weren't and then it just came sort of back in we, we just we simply sang together and we held each other it's it's a this this experience is available to everyone. That's that sort of part of it. And then in the circle, sometimes there'll just be this moment when you'll look around the circle and you'll and and there's, and there's a kind of a an energy that takes over where suddenly every no one's trying to sing anymore, but this sound is just emerging from every heart, from every soul, whether they can sing or not, doesn't matter. And there's just such sweetness, such harmony, such connection. 
and then people you know you just know that as you're experiencing it and looking around the room that literally everybody is in love mm. just in love and in love without uh, agenda without conditionality without form and this love is endless infinite it's very very profound experience and everybody should be taught this from a young age and yes of course we love mama papa our brothers and sisters our family our grandparents our community and our cult you know i'm not putting it's not um putting any of that down but imagine how much easier everything would be if people understood what love is mm. when it doesn't have those boundaries and sort of fractals and um it's that that's what i experience in in the circles and i experience it more and more particularly with people who haven't done it before suddenly they 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 get it mm. they get that they're connected to every other human being and that's a really oh man it's just it's, it's a beautiful it's beautiful to bear bear witness to it yeah yeah and I, just for the viewers watching and I, and I have a question for you coming off this kim is in my words, I would, you know, the sort of sense of real closeness and togetherness that gives birth to this, right? Mm -hmm. And it gives birth to this feeling or an atmosphere of, of something, in my opinion, I'm still, as I'm maturing as a man, trying to work out what, what love is. And I have my mm -hmm. own ideals about that. But And there's this warm feeling that can happen. And I'm imagining with this new energy in the system, it stirs some things up inside for some people stuff that needs to be stirred, things that needs to come to the surface, things that might not always be warm and fuzzy, but are wildly important to meet. Yeah, look, it's the, the, the thing that is accompanied most with this work is grief. Yeah. It's huge sadness, huge grief held sometimes for lifetimes, I believe, you know, practically in the DNA, but even just, let's say, somatically in, you know, particularly for people who had a difficult birth or, or traumatized for whatever reason. And of course, just being in the modern world is traumatic. Being born and dying is traumatic, for God's sake. Hello, you're born. Excuse me, you're going to die. Um, next. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, we've got, a, we've got a few things that might help. Here's a nice book. Um, uh, Jesus is there. There's, uh, there's, um, there's all sorts of other great gods who are going to help you through this process. And don't worry if you put your faith in him and him, her, it, whatever, you're going to be fine. But you still got to die. Um, so you're going to miss everybody and all the rest of it. So that, of course, it's just it's profoundly, it's profoundly difficult. Now, for, also for other people who've suppressed emotions. I mean, okay, let's talk about my own experience because that's what I know and which I hope helps me help others sexual abuse it's for i'm committed on a young person who's vulnerable yeah it's you know i've done a lot of work with that and you know there's a huge amount of shame it's affected intimate relationship for me forever um being sexually abused by homosexual you know it's not fun um it's not fun being raped I believe there are a lot more men out there who've had this experience than let on because they find it very difficult to talk. By the way, again, I'm not. This has got nothing to do with with comparing or saying one is more painful than another between men, women, and 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 whatever. It's just that it is a very. It's much more common, I believe. And I saw an amazing uh, interview that you did with someone who works with this stuff. It's it's so hard. To deal with it and i think that it's rife we all know we, we we are all horrified at the level of child abuse on this planet on so many different layers levels whether it you know and then get the whole refugee thing from wars and children suffering the level of suffering it's yeah and we're all in this together and we've got to heal it together and it's massive planetary wide stuff but then for me that's that's what comes up when you feel that beautiful connection and connectivity. I have people say to me after sessions and after circles and so on, this is the first time I haven't felt alone. 
This is the mm. first time I've cried in 30 years. This is the first time I've felt. And it does come with a longing and a grief mm. and a sadness for what some people describe as those lost years of all of that pain of being in the wilderness. And why didn't someone tell me this sooner? Well, here's the, the good news is that you can't rewind. You can't get those years back. But what you can do is with that spark of feeling, with that, that little glimpse of what it feels like to be in the universal love field frequency, dive into it. So explore the pain. Go, go and find a therapist or do the breath work. Get into a circle. I mean, I have people who come every Tuesday because they need that to anchor, to express, to feel not alone and find groups like that. Join community. Don't be alone with your pain and your grief. And there's a lot of it that everybody's carrying. And, you know, this is a huge subject. And what I'm saying is obvious. But society does not address these things one fucking bit. They don't. Absolutely. It's just, don't. Open, all the social services. <clears throat> We're not taught any of this stuff. We're not. We should be, all of us, dealing with this. We should be cleaning up the planet and healing one another massively globally instead of all of this bullshit that they're trying to impose on us now with all this control and transhumanism and fucking crap and vaccination passports. And I don't want to get into all of that, but in, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm, you know, the depth of what you're saying, Kim, is what I'm hearing is trauma. You can't separate trauma and grief, and grief is needed. Grief helps you find a way to the heart, and coming into the heart and having closeness helps you find your way into grief. And all of this is essential to come alive. Yeah. And this aliveness. And then, yeah. And you're going to show me. Grief. You've got to feel show, it. You know? Show me another vital human being, and I'll have a cup of tea with you. You know, yeah. that's what that does. Like, it brings you alive. And yeah. uh, this spark that I'm finding, like I feel as if in the old days, Kim would be going out to the battlefield now with that charged by what we're talking about. It's just fuels. It fuels the heart. It's, it's, it's essential. What else is there on this life but not to come alive, to come alive and to lean into life? To yeah, meet it I wanted, on? yeah, I'm getting excited now. Look, I just want to share with you, like even in this latest breath camp, which is when we get together for 10 days and breathe 50, 60 souls. I mean, what's really encouraging more men and younger men, and I tell you what, what, what makes me burst with emotion every time is when I see one of my brothers, younger brothers, getting into that circle and they're strong and beautiful and caring, compassionate, already wonderful, beautiful men. But then they kind of get in touch with that well mm -hmm. and it pours out of them and they break down and they release witnessed by women yeah it, you know this is so profoundly powerful every single politician you see up there needs to do this work every ceo and every narcissist that's running our planet you know i don't know it's they're very diff it's a very difficult condition because it's the pr sort of primary reflection but it's i tell you to see a man a brother doing the work and breaking down into the feeling realms when they have that warrior strength, when they have that clarity. I've just been working with someone at the breath camp. I think about him, I want to cry. You yeah. know, just the most incredible fire keeper. The care that he gave everybody around the fire, bringing the ashes from one to the other, building ceremony, and then going at the same time through his own deep process to connect mm -hmm. into the heart, to the depth of his feeling. And then you know, wow, another soul walking on our planet connected. This is what gives me hope. And I encourage anybody who's feeling these things or thinking about doing or going in this direction, don't hesitate. Dive deep in now. Yeah. Dive deep in now, because the reality is, and I say this on most on most podcasts, is that we all struggle, we all get stuck, and we all need help, and and we need each other. You know, we really do need each other. And I want you, Kim, to before I want to end with a little experiential, but just for you to give us some more. So, where can they find Kim Kinsley? Because if anybody's interested or moved by feeling into the space with Kim, feeling a resonance in their body where there's something happening when you hear us share tonight. 
you can put your uh, questions in in the feed below, and um, you can. And, and I'm sure Kim can put some more information in, or we'll put in some information to where to contact Kim. But just tell him, tell us a little bit, Kim, about what's happening, where it's happening. Good. Well, gosh, there's so much happening. Um, so let's start. Let's start with um, uh, Tuesdays. On Tuesday, about four months ago, I think it was, we decided, or I decided, let's do a ceremonial breath. What I call a ceremonial breath work. It's really it's six thirty to seven thirty, and what I'll do is I will put the link in. And it's with the breathwork school that I owned with, but I bring my elements to it. Super simple. It's supposed to be an hour, but we always spend 90 minutes because we share for 30 minutes after. We have a fire, and multiple fires are growing. The numbers are growing, and we literally get together. We do a little bit of a tune-in, and then we lie down or sit down, close our eyes, and we breathe for 35 minutes to some really deep chanting primarily. Sometimes we share story and then we come out of it. Like last week I was doing it around the fire at the breath camp. So we had like 30 people, 40 people were tuning in. So that energy was there and we all feel one another. And then afterwards we share around the fire and the shares are beautiful. People, I didn't know this existed. It's the first time I felt connected. Oh, I want to do it. People are going on to the training. They're doing their own fires. So 6.30 to 7.30, you can find me at the alchemyofbreath.com ceremonial breathwork link coming. That's it. That's what it looks like. That's a lot of wax ended up in my computer keyboard um, and on the table, and I ruined a friend's scarf. But um, because I was in a hotel, I used candles. But the fire was going back at the breath camp, and more fires are being lit. We're going to be lighting one next week here in some standing stones next to the heart-shaped lake. There you go. There's the farm. This is our hemp farm. And there's Mike, my dear friend and partner, wonderful, incredible man, and some of the wonderful people who help us here. And there's our fire. And uh, and there's the hemp farm, actually. So, so then it sort of brings us to the fact that we're you know, involved in education, the education of what it is to come back on the land, feel the land, feel the fire. And this has led to us crazily putting up a yurt, which is just out there in the garden or in a field. It was a field five weeks ago. Now there's a yurt with a beautiful reception. And Mike, I said to him, can we have a little water feature? And he said, heart? Oh, yeah. So I was expecting a little pond. And it's this huge heart-shaped lake next to the yurt and i planted roses all around it and then not to be outdone by that he's gonna he's you know building a celtic standing stone circle in the shape of a medicine wheel and it just goes on and on so in that regard we're going to start doing the chant breathe dance dot com processes which is really just four breath works ceremonial breathwork which is sort of leading you through chanting into kind of some aboriginal um kind of uh, purification firework we're moving we're chanting we're dancing but really i probably would have done a really big explanation a few years back but now i'll reduce it really to just come and connect with yourself and through yourself connecting with others and these are just tools that's fun but it's deep work and it's hard work because it brings stuff up. But also you're held very safely by a really beautiful group of people. We sing to you. We, we give you body work. We hold you for whatever needs to come. So if you're someone who feels like you're about to burst and you can't bear it and you don't know what to do and it's just you're in agony, come this way and we're going to hold you really tight in a frequency of love. And you're going to leave here probably still feeling vulnerable and raw, but you'll feel connected. And then you'll also have connected with a community of like-minded souls. And together, we support one another. And that's the key. You do not have to go through this alone. Yeah. So that's actually not this weekend. It's the weekend after 24, 25th, 26th. And then again, I'll put the link and the connection to our dear friend Karina, who's who 
who both of you know actually, and Phil knows who's, who's in the background. And uh, Nigel, you know her, so she's, you know, so wonderful to be continuing the work with her. I think this will be our fifth, our fifth flow together. And we call it chant, breathe, dance, but really, it's, I just call it, sit and connect, breathe and connect. Mm -hmm. And, and this is in Cavan, Kim, right? In Cavan, County Cavan, and um, a beautiful farm, Riverside Farm, where we grow the hemp. Mike's a remarkable man, and, you know, you'd think that he was, you know, probably farming, but he's so open, and, you know, he's just worked so hard, hard on putting this beautiful place together. So those are sort of two things that are coming up, and then, then I'm teaching again, again at another breath school, breath camp, from the 1st to the 10th at Gaunt's house with AOB, kind of building from the energy of the last one. And then recently I was con contacted by Daman Hur, you know, that amazing temple. And mm -hmm. so there's something brewing there, which I'd not fully formed yet. Um, and then I, you know, I'm just here too. And I, I work quite a lot with one-on-ones with people, super gentle work. Um, often I'm just listening to people they want to be heard we do a little breath work i try and get them connected in a little bit more and then sometimes they then go on to a therapist or you know do deeper work with someone else and but i'm also available for that I'm quite busy but you know that's a, that's a possibility and then you know in the bigger picture what we're really trying to do is you know with going back to what we're doing on the harm which is a harm farm sorry the farm is is healing center so people or other people are bringing their amazing talents as i hope you will when you come back this way yeah and um so there's healing happening and of course cbd which also says uh, chant breathe dance is the most wonderful medicine and i think what's really important about it and, and i think what it stands for is it's regenerative to the soil and for all the people who are suffering from big anxiety, of which there are many, you do not need to keep taking your Xanax and your Valium and all the other bloody prescription drugs that are very bad for you. Been there, done that. Sleeping pills to get you to sleep. Been there, done that. Nearly wasn't here because of it. Um, and you can take this wonderful natural medicine, which will help calm the nervous system, help you sleep, start helping connect the neural pathways or reconnect synapses and things it's it's i'm not an expert i'm not i'm not sitting here with a lab coat do your own research but what's different about ours is it's the whole plant it's planted with love hence love is in the earth it's hand planted the seeds hand harvested and hand dried and then made in a very natural process with a bit of little bit of heat and then you know soaking in oil and then cold pressed and and blended with other things it's a most beautiful beautiful product and um you know it's going well and we're about to go out globally with a incredible foundation uh, of a friend of mine whose father wrote a very beautiful song imagining a new world and i'll just leave it there but things are brewing things are happening and it's all connected we want to feel good we want to feel clear we want to feel detoxed we want to be available to ourselves and the world and we need to get help we need to be connected we need support and we need to take the right type of medicine to support our processes and people can come here to the farm we have people coming just two people just arrived now to to be here just to be on the land and herbs are growing herbalists are coming you'd love all of the triscal shaped hazel trees coming up and the wisdom women and wise women and the and the witches and the and the medicine people and the you know it's all coming here it's all coming nice. here. and it's fun Nigel. it's fun it, we have a great time we eat together and we cook beautiful yummy food and organic food and so it's there's something happening here it's really beautiful to behold so I want everybody to tune in to it's by the way, it's called to behold, it's called Hugh Gold dot online. That's a, a shameless plug. But um yeah, I I think yeah, Hugh Gold 
go online, check it out. There's just pictures of beautiful people and working on the land and videos. And, and um, I think you'll get a sense of the, the vibrancy and the heart centeredness of it, which in turn helps the healing work, which in turn helps my own process because I'm in a constant process of healing and coming into balance and, you know, and that's wow. a, daily, a daily prayer. Well, wow, Kim, you know, like just, uh, I didn't know all of what was going on there and, and you know, just to uh, stand back and, and look at it from an aerial view, I, I'm, I'm looking down at this, these hearts coming together on a land and and the grief coming, uh, the happiness coming, uh, the, the joy coming, uh, the despair coming, all of it's coming and been held and it's been managed with, uh, with, the, with the hearts and, and souls of many. And then the land around the holding is 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 growing this this medicine that 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 can then extend out and touch people's you know brains to help them sleep and and help their nervous systems to regulate and help their joints to lacken their inflammation and pain and what and where else in the world do you have that going on you know where you have that sort of vibration. That's real. I don't know. I think that needs a new term. You know, we used to know organic, then it was biodynamic. Maybe this needs to be called Kim organic or something. Well, I don't know, but something man. has to. Something <laughs> needs to come because that's different. But, you know, you know Steiner would be Steiner would be happy with you. You know, it's look. It's all connected. It's all good for the earth. It and it's all experiential. And why wouldn't we do it all together? And so that's yeah. kind of what's happening. And also, then these satellite places go. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. You know, because otherwise it's just, oh, we're farming over here. And then we send it off and it's processed. And it's like, well, you know, we've got to just slow down and, 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 and share this stuff and come together in it, around it, with it. And, um, you know, I what can't wonder. Least... People harvest it. They're the happy hamsters, man. I mean, it's like everybody's singing and just having it because it makes you happy. And we're not, we're absolutely clear that we do not get high on this supply. It is completely EU regulated with, you know, you don't get stoned. It's just really, really good for the body. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yes. it's, it's uh, very important that people know that, but it's, it's the action of being on the land again, that really is people go, wow, I can really feel this. That's very really beautiful to be part of it. It's really, I feel, look, I, I'm living in a, not a simple little mobile home um, I don't have any money and uh, you know let's go back to the beginning you know it's there is no such thing as you know if poverty is being measured by money there, yes these, this is very real every single human being on this planet should have enough to eat should have a beautiful community of souls to share their song, their story, their love. Everyone should be taken care of in equal measure and importance. We should support one another. And, you know, I can say that I was in poverty when I had the most money and the most possessions in my bank account and my life. And now I have the least I've ever had in that measure I have never been more fulfilled, happy. And the reason that there is so much wealth in my life is because of the people around me, the people I work with, the, pe the, the love that surrounds me. That is, that's, that is the greatest wealth, and it's available to everyone. We just got it wrong. It's the wrong way around. That's it. And I'll add to that, Kim. Because I hadn't seen you for a while, and after sitting with you here, I'm going to lead into to a, a, a meditation of sorts now. Another valuable commodity here, because you've always been a generous man. I was so moved at times by how generous you were, hmm. and I don't think that stopped. But I think where the generosity is coming from is coming from a different, more integrated place in you because you got, it wasn't a generosity to get away from something. You went into yourself and you blossomed and you grew and you deepened through that. And then it's not a sort of giving 
to distract it's a coming forth and coming from this dwelling this rich ravine that's been birthed through these chapters in your life that since i last saw you so so i'm saying yeah that's another deep nourishment in your life is is what you're born but that i see in you what you've brought forth in and where and where things come from now seems to be coming from a deeper deeper place within your heart within your soul and it's a real real honor to be here witnessing um you in the way that you are today it's a real mm. privilege for me so thank oh. you kim mm. it's easy to give but it's a whole different deal to give from a deep place of where you're already filled not mm. trying to fill from the giving and that's mm. something i feel so strong today as i hear you share and that's rare that's a rare diamond mm. thank you mm. this sort of Breathe that in, receive that in, you know, it's, it's difficult to receive sometimes. Thank you. Yeah, and, um, you know, maybe next time we'll share how <laughs> we met. <laughs> That's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, <laughs> I just, it, it's funny how that juxtaposition is. You know, if we'd, um, Nige, it's so lovely to see you. And um, I look back at our time and, yeah, we, we, we did, we just had this really beautiful relationship. And I, and I know, you know, I'd come to see you, but there was always such a great share that we had. You know, we, we always had this great flow and banter and, you know, st- looking at this and that and then i'd see you in the circle so i really appreciate uh our friendship and connection and delighted that all of this amazing news and your n- new family and and that that thing in your life that i wasn't there to share with you but i'm really looking forward to getting to know your family and uh and it feels really good to uh, to see you embark on that particular journey Mm, yeah well we'll be in the we'll be in the yurt with you uh early next year and that's 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 yeah. that's 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 a, that's a given and so so everyone um for those who are listening as we're going to end here with uh, an experiences uh with kim here um uh, for those who are listening who are struggling who are stuck who are depressed who are riddled with anxiety or are struggling in relationship difficulty to sleep at night, people who lost in their job or or kind of physically ill in any shape or form, there's a good possibility that you're holding something or that you could do with having uh, support in some shape or form. And, and, you know, and, you know, starting to talk, often we're very hidden and uh, often we uh, avoid or are submissive or withdrawn in the world and often alongside that comes all these problems that we that we talk about or maybe we're very outwardly charismatic and busy and we're, we're struggling maybe we're also hiding in that way so i really want to invite anybody that has a little little movement in them where they're curious about you know maybe i could try something different or maybe i could actually not have to do it all by myself so for those people please check the comments below for the links to the to um kim's events and spaces and for those in ireland um in the northern ireland or southern ireland cabins very accessible and it's beautiful uh it's underrated and it's definitely underrated because we, we got a we got a golden nugget there called kim kinsley doing his you know doing his magic so yeah so really and again, I'm just going to sum Kim up here as he leads us into this. Because Kim, when I see Kim, what my heart says when I see Kim is somebody who comes in and ignites people's remembrance of the lost parts of self so they can come back home. Mm-hmm. They've been echoing over generations to find that place. And you come in and ignite that like a wild bush fire. <laughs> and it's an honor to be warmed at that in this gathering tonight. And I'm wishing you all the best, Kim. Oh, Take us into what you do so well. Well, Nige, you know, I'm just wondering if we, if we um, I'm seeing a, a share button below, and I'm wondering if we could just have a little bit of music 
to speak over. We could try it, but would would we try it? We should. We didn't before. Maybe just um, so maybe we... yeah. Turn on the maybe the music there in the background. It'll, it should should be fine. Yeah, maybe we'll just do that. We'll keep it super simple and see if that works. See how, see how it goes. You know, it's um, I love using music because you know there's the the harmony within it and the vibration within it, and it can settle people down. And um, I'm going to see if uh, I'll just do a little experiment just while we're winding up here, just to see if um, this works. And it's very, very simple. Um, it's uh, I'm going to put the volume low, and we'll just see if there is a kind of um, whether you can hear anything or not. Um, is there a little sound coming through there? A little music? It's beautiful, Kim. It's perfect. Okay, so what we try to do is as we settle. So let's just, Nige, I love you. I love you deeply, brother. And to Phil, who's behind there somewhere, my dear friend. We shared so many things when you were over, and I'm sure we'll see each other again. So for all the brothers and all the sisters and all the mothers and all the fathers, the grandfathers, the grandmothers, and the children, the children of our past, the children now and the children of the future, we breathe this prayer together for our own healing and the healing of our world. so that we can imagine a new earth together. So just close your eyes and tune in as we listen to the ancestral chant. Feel the vibration of the voice, the beautiful voice of the goddess. Invite your inner child to listen to his or her song. And as we just breathe gently together in the heart, let us remember together. Let's remember everything. Activate everything in the breath. In. And let go. Notice what is arising. The in breath is the birth, and the out breath, as it will be one day, our death. We practice in every moment. Universality of life. And let go. just silence our breath in and out and slowly open your eyes oh. 
Ai. Hmm. Just a little glimpse in to the weaving of the prayer. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Nigel. Have a beautiful evening, and thank you very much for having me on and having a natter. And uh, take care of yourself. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you soon. And it won't be too long now. So, and thanks, Phil, for being uh, such a beautiful help in the background there. See you yeah. soon. Love thanks, to your Phil. family. Thank you, Kim. Kim, your man. Lots of lots of blessings. And um, we might be doing something again. I would love to do something with you again. Um, yeah. We'll definitely be celebrating your your side um, on your arrival, and we'll, we'll whip up a storm, and maybe we get to get get the men out there in the in the in the stones and the fire. We we'll look forward to that and safe travel. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody watching. Thank you for the people who have stayed the distance with us. Thank you for the people who, you know, took part in the experientials. Thank you for the people who watched a little bit and left and came back and watched a little bit. Well, thank you to the people who watched and left. Um, and thank you to the people all... who didn't watch. Just thank everyone. <laughs> That's quite a lot of those. You know, there's a lot of people yeah. to thank. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell right now, I'm kind of blissed out of it after that bit of breathing. So, um, to, because I know how I am when I'm blissed out, I would have a tendency to, to, to ramble. So I'm just going to cut it short, you know, just again. If there's anybody out there who also know who needs help, uh, who you think um, uh, is struggling, please again uh, let them let them watch this, share it with them, uh, tell them there's people out there who can help. And again, if you're moved by anything within uh, the space today, uh, please check the comments below, and you'll find all the details. And if this doesn't resonate and you're still curious reach out to uh, any sort of groups in your area or a therapist, a counselor, a psychotherapist, a psychoanalyst, a young analyst. Like there's just people that, that, that accompany and, and you're worth it. You really are. So thank you, everybody. I'm wishing you a lovely weekend and we'll be back same time, same place with another beautiful heart uh, to share their story. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. Bless you, Nigel. See you. Thanks, everyone. I just saw Jara. Hey, Jarrah. Cool, man. See you soon. Mm -hmm.